uh, very happy to uh, to see you here. Um, just a quick question, if, and if you can yeah, maybe um, uh, raise your your hand, uh, who um, who came to this, um, uh, who's coming to this um, uh, webinar today as um, a parent, as educator? Okay, Rav as a parent, as educators. Okay, so more more educators than uh, than parents. Okay, or you can be, uh, be both. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. Some of uh, uh, of you are are both. Great, good. So um, uh, let's start straight away. Um, the what we'll we'll do is uh, before answering what age should we start teaching children about uh, money, uh, we'll uh, we'll talk also. Uh, we we'll start with why they should learn about money and how do they learn and uh, also i can see uh, your, your your answers are both okay great right uh, so I, i'll try it, it the, this the webinar is really for both parents and um educators and I, i'll try at the end to to make a bit the difference you as an educator where you're gonna you can help uh, uh, other parents with um so we'll talk also about a uh, the um, savings and and pocket money. I, I usually have yeah lots of questions about uh, uh, pocket money, and at the end we have a, a quick announcement about uh, A and B make three. For those who don't know me, and I think um, most of you, um, uh, I think I, I saw them in in a face to face uh, a, a training. I'm Sophie Payne, and I'm the founder of ANB Mech3. And ANB Mech3 uh, designs um, uh, financial education programs and uh, entrepreneurship uh, programs. So, when I uh, prepare this uh, this webinar, I um, I wanted to have a, a few illustrations, and uh, and uh, I wanted to check, uh, even though I, I do that regularly, what what others uh, say about. Um, children and money. The, uh, these photos are, are really good illustrations of the, the general trends about um, financial education for children. So typically, you have uh, um, young children, actually, you don't, you don't have many pictures uh, uh, about teenagers, so young children, uh, and the, the, the star is savings. So it, that's um, and most of the the programs or most of the the literature about financial financial education and children is about savings and the the star is the piggy bank. Um, so the, you have all these pictures of children uh, putting cash, uh, mostly coins, makes nice noise in uh, in piggy banks or in uh, in jars to uh, uh, to make them uh, learn about the importance of uh, of savings. You have. I, I was a bit surprised. You have this uh, this trend of lots of pictures of children with uh, wearing glasses, as if it was like a, a prerequisite. Or if you are, if you want to manage money at some point, you, you're going to be a, a nerd with uh, with glasses. I was a bit surprised by the numbers of uh, of pictures with uh, kids with uh, with glasses. But the uh, the the trend also is to have all these pictures of. Um, Happy children with yeah usually smiling and parents are smiling and and they just yeah put coins in the uh, uh, in different jars or in the uh, in the piggy bank. So most of the um, the training on uh, money management for children is really focused on savings, and just yeah keep that in mind because uh, it's um uh, we'll talk about it uh, again. So. The other thing, I think, before looking at what age and uh, what the, the children should learn and how they should learn, uh, we may start with wondering why do parents want their children to learn about money? So as some of you are both parents and educators, I'd be very happy uh, to hear why do you want your children to learn about money. Maybe you can take a few minutes to uh, think or uh, uh, either just um, open your, your mic and, and, and say it or if, if you want you can type it also in the uh, in the chat the value of money we yeah, are responsible with their choices yeah mm -hmm. um, but one yeah I understand how hard parents um, uh, uh, make money mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, it's not school does not teach it, life doesn't teach it. Mm -hmm. Saving, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great, yeah, great answers. So, um, the there's a kind of general trend is um, we want our children to be uh, uh, just an in interesting one to create good habit, yeah, uh, uh, many relation, yeah, mm -hmm. good habits. So there's a kind of general trend uh, in education is we we see our children as some. Um, future um, uh, college uh, children and future uh, or college uh, attendant and, uh, and and future employees. Uh, so we want them to be ready for that. And uh, so and that's, yeah, that's why um, tutoring, for example, is, uh, is so successful. And uh, it, private schools, for example, even in countries where the, um, uh, and, and even for parents, who can't really afford it they're, they're ready to uh, to spend money uh, to uh, to have their children uh, get education and education as um, seen as um, and I can I would say reduced to a set of skills and knowledge that's it and the in the same way many, management or financial education for children is uh, uh, is part of this trend is for the your children to be life ready so they need to learn how to spend well how to earn money that yeah money doesn't come from nowhere you need to work hard to uh, uh, to get it and uh, why savings is uh, is important and so on so it's kind of this this general trend of we see um, young human beings, our children, uh, they, they need to be ready for the uh, for the the life uh, after eighteen and twenty when they they start uh, uh, studying and being on their own and, and and so on. And the the other trend and uh, is that parents don't know, and they need to learn from experts. So parents usually don't, uh, and that, that was, that's why there's such a, uh, a request for financial education is that parents don't trust themselves to be good educators about money and they, they want to learn from uh, experts and they think that the experts know better and, uh, and they want their children to go to classes, formal classes, so that they learn uh, about uh, money management. I think there's a there's a kind of secret hope, and I, I've uh, my kids are, are, are big now, but um, uh, especially for uh, younger kids or even yeah teenagers, as parents we have a, a secret hope is that by learning uh, how to manage money, uh, we'll we'll stop our children nag for things, and uh, we, we'll stop the dramas in the in the shops, and uh, so that yeah, children stop saying ah oh, mom I want this I want this. Uh, and um, the children are bombarded from early age, uh, especially as soon as they are there in front of a screen, uh, to advertising and, and temptations to consume. And then they go to school and they, they see their other friends uh, have things. Uh, so that the one, one way to stop that, uh, we hope, is that by uh, getting them financially educated, uh, they will understand that uh, we can't buy everything. Uh, I think that's part of the uh, the secret hope of the uh, uh, of the parents. And I think back in our mind to somewhere, we we want them to do better than us, and we want them to be better at budgeting, better at uh, uh, to have a, a more secure financial life uh, than we have. So I, I don't know if you agree with that, with with all that, especially the uh, the secret hopes that we uh, that we have. So the yeah okay mm -hmm. a few reaction um, the even if we don't educate formally our uh, our children if we don't tell them yeah it's important to say give them a piggyback and and so on our children 
do learn about money all the time. And uh, for some of you may know this uh, uh, this training activity because I, I usually do it when I uh, I do a training on uh, uh, raising uh, financially uh, uh, educated uh, children. So the uh, that's what parents do, and the the best way that I mean, the, the the way children learn is by observing their parents. There was an experiment, uh, I think, 10 or 15 years ago, um, uh, it was some, um, in the US. The, um, the, an educator split children in three groups. There was one group, it was about uh, charity, giving money, uh, and, and children. So he, he wanted to kind of test the generosity of, of children. And the first group, uh, was um, they they were told that they had a lecture about the importance of giving to others, and the second group had a similar lecture, and the the educator was giving uh, money as an example to to someone uh, needy, and then the third groups of kids they didn't get any lecture. But the the educator uh, several times gave money to uh, to someone needy, and then they gave money to the to the three groups, to the children in the three groups, and they uh, they kind of observed what the kids were doing. Which group do you think? Which groups of uh, of kids were the the most uh, generous? The number one who got a lecture, and the number two got lecture and one example on the number three you didn't get any lecture but so the adult gave money can you guess you got yeah number three so the adult anyone else wants to uh try to guess two two well, oh, that was number three, actually. Yes, number three. They uh, just by seeing, by observing, and uh, and that that teaches a lot about how children learn about money. So, the age, in a way, is not relevant because they're going to start from very early on. Uh, um, they see us uh, manage this very mysterious thing, which is uh, which is money. So, uh, and uh, and. In, in the takeaway, that would be the uh, for me the main takeaway is as parents we need to be very careful in in how we behave uh, because uh, we set the norm for children. So a few examples: if uh, your child wants something and each time he he wants something, you never say no. What what do you think your children is going to uh, to learn from it? That's the first example on the uh, uh, on the slide. Yep, they can have anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, money is is. Um, I think value the value of money is very conceptual so for children that they, they might not uh, understand they yeah they, they will understand there's no limit exactly so uh, there's absolutely no limit mm -hmm. so that's why it's important to say you no know, to uh, uh, to children to set these uh, these limits so another example if your child feels sad and you buy something to uh, uh, to cheer uh, to cheer him up what what do you think they're going to uh, to learn so your child is sad and okay, oh, okay. don't worry i'm going to buy you something Exactly, Ravelin, yeah. The happiness depends on money. So spending makes you happy. So uh, exactly. And that's um, this one is a huge problem. The third one is, uh, to me, very problematic as well. If you promise money 
and usually we, we have good intention, but um, uh, children are going to see it in a, in a different way. Um, if you promise uh, some money uh, for your children to get good grades, okay, okay. Um, if you if you manage to have your yeah, AAA everywhere everywhere in all your topics this uh, this semester, you get ten dollars. What do you think the child is is going to learn? Motivation. No, kind of corruption, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You you just everything depends on money. So uh and the uh exactly. The here the winner that you, you learn because of money and uh it's the purpose of learning. Similar things um when you promise money to do some house chores. And if you promise money, let's say to uh, make your bed and, and um, clean up your room and you, you'd get uh, um, uh, $2, so two euros, then the, the kid will only do it for the money and they will understand that everything, uh, everything is about money, which is is not why we want them to to learn really. Um, I mean, they they should learn for the, uh, the sake of learning and uh, uh, not just to get money. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the uh, fourth one is when, uh, for example, we each time we buy something, we uh, we never discuss it, uh, which is I uh, go to the shop, buy, and 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 that's it. What do you think they they learn from it? And this one is is more subtle because we we tend to do that. Um, so what do you think they are uh, uh, they learn from that? Yeah, exactly, Gail. Yeah, it's not a big decision, not a big deal. You just spend, and and that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they will need. They they will learn that you don't need to plan or think. You just spend, and 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 that's it. Uh, and uh, they also learn that money is kind of mysterious. We, we never talk about it. So, uh, so all these are, um, and you can think about your your own behavior, how you uh, um uh, you you deal with money and uh, in a everyday life, and how just try to to be in the uh, uh, in the shoes of your child and try to think how a child can interpret it, how uh, uh, how all our habits uh, can uh, really shape the attitude of uh, of our children towards money and you can do and i'm talking to you as educators you can do many many lessons about money for the uh, uh, for children they will always be limited in impact towards what parents uh, um Kind of parents instill with their uh, with their behavior. Um, I was uh, for, so, so several years. Uh, yeah, NBMEC three started in in Hong Kong in in two thousand and five, and at first we um, we ran training for um, domestic workers, migrant workers in in Hong Kong, and then very soon we had uh, a demand to to run training for children. So for the same reasons, parents were worried. They wanted to uh, their children to be uh, life ready and, and learn all these uh, saving skills, uh, especially. And I remember once I was uh, invited to do like a private course for a group of um, um, five uh, 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 children. I think they were there around eight to, to nine years old. And I arrived in this um, uh, this big uh, uh, flat in, in Hong Kong. And... In a room, they set us in a uh, in a room full of toys. I mean, literally, there were toys from the floor to the uh, 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 to the ceiling. And I was thinking, I was trying to uh, make children uh, learn about the uh, the difference about important expenses and less important expenses, and the so called needs and, and wants, and the importance to keep money for later. And so, but I was thinking, well, what are they going to learn, really? I mean, obviously, they've got all the toys they want. Uh, and what's uh, I can teach them even 10 hours or 20 hours. It's not going to change their way of life, the uh, the, the, the life skills that they learn from uh, their parents' behavior. So and that's, uh, that's why I stopped, actually, uh, doing training for children. And I started doing uh, training to parents. Because parents' behavior is key. You're going to try to imagine how many hours uh, children spend with their parents versus 
the few hours, even if it's 20 hours, even if it's 30 hours, uh, it's really a little drop in uh, uh, in the numbers of uh, in the time they're going to spend with their uh, with their parents. So parents' behavior is key. And parents, and it's part of their role as parents, as educators, uh, they need to be role model, including with, uh, with money. So children see you all the time. I, I still remember, uh, so I'm, I don't know how you learned how to manage money. You, I'm, I'm, um, I'd be surprised, actually, who, who got, as a child, um, education, uh, formal education on money management? Did you get um, did you get any? I can tell you I didn't get any. I, I didn't learn because uh, those yeah there was nothing. Yeah, with a teacher mm -hmm. or you can be an educator or but um, kind of really a, a money lesson at some point, whether it was in school as after school. I got yeah no no. Mm -hmm. No, okay. Um, we most of us didn't get any, but we manage money, so we, we we learn it from other ways, and we learn it even so. You, after the the webinar, you can think about yeah how who you learn as a child, but you learn it from yeah your parents and also observing your your parents. I still remember my uh, uh, my father, once a month receiving his bank statement and rechecking everything and and doing his budget. I mean that kind of things. He never said anything. I just saw it in the um, saw him in the uh, uh, in the dining room doing that every month. So whatever parents do for children, it's normal behavior that parents sets the norm. So if your children see you do your budget every month or discuss with your um, uh, with your spouse, okay, can we afford this this month? Maybe we should save. I mean, you don't talk directly to the children, but they hear it, they observe it. And they will uh, understand that this is the normal behavior. And uh, simple things, you can do that. And then your child, if, even at a very early age, are going to, uh, uh, is going to see it. If every time you go shopping, every time you do a shopping list, and you, uh, you never go shopping without a shopping list, that's something that they're going to think as as normal. So, uh, you, they're going to write a shopping list just naturally. You, you don't have to teach it because they saw it as something normal. And uh, same thing when you you discuss about uh, purchases uh, and say, oh, can we afford? I still remember my uh, my parents, who uh, one year decided to to buy a, a house. And that year we didn't go on holiday. We uh, uh, because there was not enough money. And to do both, buying a, um, a house and a, uh, going on a, on a vacation, so they didn't. They talked about it. They uh, this kind of it was in, ingrained in me that if you do if you be, do a big purchase, you can do you can't do other things. So it's all this, it's all through this that your your child can learn about um, uh, money. So that's very very important. Another a very important thing, and especially in our generation, and uh, in, I mean in, 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 in this generation, it's uh, don't trade off time with money. When your child is not happy, and uh, you need to find time to spend uh, uh, with uh, with him or, or her, and a present something or even yeah even food or it, it's not going to replace the time that your child uh, needs from you so don't don't do the trade off and, uh, and and for me time is is not money it's uh, uh, when a child needs time a child needs uh, to uh, to spend uh, time and to discuss and to play with parents and you, you cannot replace that with anything material like a present or a new toy or, or anything so that's something um, you, you need to be very careful with that uh, with this and uh, try not to monetize your family life and uh, the relationship you built with children uh, should not depend on, on on money and so on. Just try to money historically historically was uh, was created uh, to deal with uh, strangers because 
when you uh, when you dealt with people you knew in your community, you were ex um, exchanging presents or, or, or tokens, uh, but not many because you trusted and you knew uh, each other. So there was all these uh, uh, exchanges of uh, um, tokens of appreciations or, uh, or value from uh, members of community to the other. Uh, but money was uh, created um, uh, to, uh, to deal with, uh, to have, to give something of value to people you didn't know or couldn't trust. So at least these golden coins, for example, had a value to, to someone. So money is not meant to, to be inside the family, okay? The uh, and I think you need to remember too that your child is not um, a consumer, even though many people would like your child to be first a consumer. But first, it's a human being. So uh, there are other things that the uh, uh, your child needs to uh, uh, to learn. So what? So I go back to the uh, uh, one of the questions um, is learning how to put money in a piggy bank. The the main uh, thing that children should learn about uh, money. There's there's one thing which uh, which is a bit um, uh, of an issue with the uh, uh, with this cash and uh, and the piggy bank is that um, digital money is increasingly uh, used, and even if in some countries it's it's not yet used, uh, it's um, uh, who knows in ten years time we may have a central bank uh, digital money. So, and uh, during the the pandemic, and it, it has um, uh, it has not stopped. Many um, many teens or young adults uh, increasingly deal with cryptocurrencies. So obviously, if you got um, uh, a child who's learned how to save with coins, and all of a sudden in uh, fast forward is eighteen or twenty, start uh, earning and. Uh, and then he hasn't got cash, he's got um, a credit card or a debit card and everything is with uh, um, Apple Pay or whatever digital uh, wallet and everything is, is not cash. And uh, in, in most countries, the um, salaries are, are not paid in, in cash, but they increasingly they're paid in, in a bank account. So it's it's digital money. And uh, he's got friends who deal with cryptocurrencies. I mean, it, all this nice little piggy bank with the cash is not going to help at all. Because, and I'm sure you, you've, uh, you've experienced it, the, uh, um, the cash uh, is uh, is in a way easy to you um, uh, to use because we can split it in different um, uh, expenses. We can uh, we see it if there's a few. It's it's very tangible. Well, digital money doesn't do uh, doesn't do that um, uh, at all. So uh, the uh, learning just with cash is not going to help them very much. The other thing too, you have um, it's kind of a trend to uh, make them think about very long term. But um, children for the long term, I mean, they, they have got much more risk with all, all the climate emergency than whether they're going to have enough uh, savings for for retirement and so on. And these savings for retirement may be endangered also by all the uh, uh, the climate emergency. So uh, that so that's the environment is changing so much. Um, uh, using this nice old piggy bank is not going to uh, to help them um, uh, very much. The the real issues, and it's uh, I saw that from uh, from various countries and so on. Betting is a huge issue, uh, especially in Africa with um, uh, like um, football uh, betting. Uh, but um, I guess in Asia, it, it might be a problem too. Online betting is um, a huge problem. It's uh, and the piggy bank. Once again, the it's nice to have this piggy bank, but it doesn't uh, prepare your child to huge, huge issues that they may face. Betting can be a problem. Um, pressure to earn income, and uh, which uh, leads to school dropping. That's also um, a, a big issue. Influencers on social media 
uh, who who try to uh, uh, kind of sell or promote uh, great deals, uh, whether it's about yeah, spending or whether it's about investing, and lots of scams uh, around uh, the issues of debts. Also, this is um, a, a big danger. So, in a way all these dangers um which are financial dangers when you um when you raise a child usually we, we're very careful with uh trying to make make him or her secure about dangers we teach them about yeah oh, don't burn yourself fire is 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 dangerous and uh cars are dangerous so we we teach them about the uh, uh to be safe I mean, the very first thing about financial education is to uh, to have them be safe financially and uh, to raise the awareness about these uh, these issues uh, also, and especially when they uh, they start being teens, and uh, they may be uh, on social media and uh, exposed to um, all kinds of pressures. Uh, I mean, advertising to bet and uh, or uh, scams and so on debts between friends uh, the um the other thing too which is um and that's why if you teach them very early on that uh, they can get rewards financial rewards for everything they will have this kind of quick money mentality which is a, a problem sometimes you just don't earn money sometimes it takes time to do something and you don't earn anything that's fine and uh, the other thing too that um, little saving um, uh, box doesn't really help is that um, the economic circumstances, the economic situation may be tough and is increasingly tough. It may be very tough to find a job and the, the cost of life, especially rents are, are very high. So all these um, little piggy bank is not going to, to teach that. So, and that's, that's very important to, uh, uh, to prepare your, your child uh, with. I'm just reading the uh, the chat. Um, smart spending decisions. Um, yes, exactly. And you do that by going shopping uh, with uh, uh, with them. And uh, so first, if you each time you go shopping, you have your shopping list. So they see that and say, okay, well, it's this. This is not on my shopping list. There's a reason why it's not on my shopping list because uh, I didn't budget it. So you just yeah explain to them and uh, and then you can um, uh, do price comparison each time you go shopping and say okay well maybe this um, uh, I know pair a uh, pair of shoes you, you need um, a, a bigger pair of shoes and there are different prices and you you, um, uh, you really involve them in the decision and say okay this one maybe um, uh, what first read the price what are the prices and uh, which one is cheaper which one is more expensive and uh, is there a quality difference that's really in and if you do that very very regularly they're going to um uh, it's going to build a habit in uh, in them so uh, good uh, good remark so what so i, I, I Kind of told you about all, all this financial safety and uh, that we we should really uh, build into financial education. We, we want our children to be uh, before to be before being little savers. We want them to be safe uh, because uh, there are lots of yeah financial uh, dangers around, um, and because the environment is is changing so much and we don't know in 20 years what uh what financial life uh, uh, may be um i think there are really two things that are very important to uh, uh, to build first thing is ethics and the second thing is um critical thinking ethics it can be get, uh, taken for granted but it's a, it's not uh, honesty and uh, I mean, you, you can do that in a in a very easy way. You go shopping, and uh, uh, you just yeah, uh, pay and the uh, if you pay in cash, the um, um, uh, the shop assistant gives you back the um, uh, uh, the change, and you just kind of uh, recount uh, the cash and say, okay, right, good, it's right. I mean. And if you do that regularly, I mean, they understand that. Um, and if there's a mistake, then you just yeah give back the money and say, okay, are you sure it's uh, it's the right cash? I mean, 
to have that ingrain in um uh, in your in your child and uh mindfulness for example and you can uh, let's go back to the examples with the with the shoes and comparing the uh, the prices uh maybe uh one uh one pair of shoes is really cheaper and and you can Ask your child, um, uh, why do you think it's, it's cheaper? What, uh, um, and try to make them understand that maybe it's cheaper because the, um, yes, the, the quality is not good, but it's also because the, the, uh, the manufacturer paid very, very low salary to the, um, uh, to the ones, to the workers who, who made the shoes and to understand that difference that yeah these these shoes yeah um, uh, if you try to understand the the salary it's, it's not going to, uh, uh, to to be very it's going to be very very low so that's that's the kind of mindfulness that um uh, that i'm thinking about trust trust is really the kind of yeah the cement of society if we we don't trust each other especially in terms of finance i mean the whole financial system would would collapse and the whole society would collapse so um if for example you um you, you give money for your child to make errands okay okay can you go shopping and and, and buy me this that and uh this and then you expect the child to give you the uh, the cash back and explain, oh, that was, and you give, yeah, 10, uh, or the, the shop in the grocery was eight, and this is two back. And just to kind of build this trust and, and understand that it's very important to, uh, uh, to, to be a trustworthy person. Uh, caring for the environment. I mean, you you can save that, yeah, but we we got a real yeah emergency with the with the environment and uh, overconsumptions. We know that overconsumption is uh, is part of the uh, of the issue. Uh, one easy um, trick is to uh, have your child name their toys uh, and uh, really care for the things that they have. It's not the things are not ha try to make them understand that things are not just disposable. But that uh, when we have something, and it can be the same thing with the clothes we have, you uh, by naming them, they become more personal, and um, people tend to uh, be more careful with uh, uh, with them. So, um, uh, for example, if you name uh, uh, one toy, and uh, if the toy is a bit broken, maybe one thing is, yeah, you want to uh, to repair it or, uh, and you don't want to replace it by another and another thing. So really make them uh, be more um, uh, aware and um, uh, of the um, that things are not disposable things. I mean, the, when I, I hear the value of money, for me, what's more important is the the value of, of things because these things come from from the earth. They are yeah uh, resources, and uh, many many can be created, uh, but the the earth has uh, finite resources. So uh, this is much more important to value uh, the uh, uh, the things uh, and the material things rather than than money actually. Critical thinking. Uh, I think, and that's something you can do once again, either when you watch um, when you're in front of your screens or in your when you're in a shop or, or so on, is um, make them understand the the selling tricks, and especially when uh, there's so much um, online buying now, and you can yeah, just click very easily on something and and and, and buy it uh, i think it's important to even when you go in a supermarket to make them yeah look at how things are displayed and just talk to, uh, to your child about it um why do you think um they want us to to buy this one and, and just to to uh, make them understand that all this we we are exposed to lots of yeah aggression from advertising who wants us to uh, to buy and uh, and that's part of the uh, 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 of, um, uh, I think it's some um, uh, the, the, the last remark from uh, from uh, Putalak about the um, the pros and cons make them 
each time decide uh, things about, and it can be any decision. It can be um, daily life shopping or uh, bigger decisions, but always think about, yeah, what are the pros and what are the cons? And just instill in them that there's, there's never a rush to spend money, never. Because if people make you rush, it's because they want you to spend and not think. So uh, try to. Uh, so your behavior is very important there. Because if you all of a sudden, if you see, oh yeah, that's great. I see this. Um, uh, I've just received this. It's yeah, minus twenty percent. We should go immediately. What? What you teach your child, even if you really want to, just yeah, get back. You teach your child that they should rush to spend, and. Um, uh, so that your attitude versus every time you're exposed to um, a money decision is very very important. Imagine you receive your um, uh, your uh, your tax, and your first reaction is is even like a very negative reaction. Oh no, this is just, it's a tax again. Wait, what are the child is going to learn? They're going to learn that tax is a bad thing, and tax are horrible. And uh, versus another attitude, which would be, oh, I've received the year uh, on the tax return and go through it with your child and say, okay, what do you think tax are for? That's a very, very different picture than that. Uh, so be very, very careful with how uh, your child sees you. Um, so you can um, talk through every family decisions you, you take. And obviously that would depend on the, on the age. You're not going to talk to ta about tax to um, a three-year-old child, but uh, from grocery, why we buy this and, and all that, writing the, the shopping list, uh, big decisions, for example, uh, um, a, a holiday or um, a, a, a celebration. What what can we afford? What should we do? And um, compare prices. I mean, just really involve them in the in the decision. So that's that's how they're going to learn to to take good decisions, and uh, and and to be smarter with that with spending, and try to instill in them to and through yeah uh, going through concrete life examples as uh, as they happen that money is always a flow it comes from someone and it goes to someone else and that uh, that will really demystify uh, money especially investing because um, many teens have this impression that money grows i mean this expression is used so many times that uh, they really think that money grows as if it was independent from something saying no money doesn't grow and uh, the uh, someone's income is always someone else's expense so even in, in terms of um of investing if you uh, your investment is not going to grow magically it's because more people are ready to buy than uh, it's uh, uh, the value, uh, the, the price uh, uh, may be bigger. But right? it means that if all of a sudden fewer people want to buy it, the price is going to collapse. I mean, to explain them to that is very, uh, very important. And stay tuned. I'm, I'm working on a, on a new game which kind of shows all this money flows. So I, I, I hope that uh, uh, I, um, uh, it would be ready soon. I've, I've tested the uh, the tax part uh, this this Tuesday with a uh, with a group, and they were kind of yeah really interested because they realized that the the tax we pay are used to um, uh, uh, to get the money is, is um, uh, it goes back to the uh, uh, to the economy in difference of for example to pay uh, for new roads to pay for um, uh, um, teacher salary and so on so they understand that oh okay well, tax is not just an expense and I think one and another important point is that you're, uh, you need to listen to your child. Children have kind of different, I don't know if it's innate, but um, built in their attitude towards money. Some are um, uh, naturally more prone to spend. Others uh, are more stingy. So uh, kind of adapt your, your attitude and, and the way you, you go through them, uh, you go with them through uh, um, uh, daily life decisions uh, kind of adapt your style to your uh, to your child so 
the let's go back to the to the pocket money uh, question because I, I always have it is it a good idea or, or not a good idea to um uh, to give pocket money. Uh, first thing, it just the, the, the most obvious thing: some families can't afford it, so and that kind of solves the uh, the question. They they just don't have enough money to uh, to pay for all the, the all the bills, all the the food and so on. So they they can't afford to uh, uh, to give pocket money. So that's one thing. Um, I've got, as you've uh, uh, heard from me already, big reservations about linking um, pocket money uh, to house chores. I mean, house chores are house chores. I mean, the uh, if you if you've always paid your child to uh, clean up uh, uh, his or her room, and then once they uh, they go uh, uh, away, they go to college, or they uh, they start uh, being independent. I mean. What are they going to do? They're going to stop um, cleaning up their room because they don't earn uh, money anymore from it. It's um, so I, I don't think it's a good idea. Same thing with with schoolwork. I mean, it needs to all this needs to come from self motivation, not from money. Um, the uh, the other issue with pocket money is that many times I I hear that oh it helps them makes the difference between needs and wants, but it's it's not true actually because. I mean, children uh, are not going to buy their own food with this money. So usually it's just to buy uh, more consumer goods. It's just to buy more wants. And so they're going to choose different wants, but they, they don't really, uh, it, it doesn't teach them to make the difference between needs and wants. And, uh, and also parents tend to kind of influenced how they're going to use this uh, uh, this money. So uh, there's also a string attached to this uh, pocket money. So the real question is, what um, do we want them to, to learn through pocket money? And I think pocket money is a great tool to, um, uh, to learn about money, but it needs to, uh, to help them manage money. So one, one thing you can do is to give them fixed amount. And obviously, that will depend on on how old they are. Uh, they are, uh, but it's just a fixed amount, meaning that if they want to spend it and they spend it, they have to wait for the next fixed amount to come. So, uh, so that will teach them how to manage um, a fixed salary. And if it's spent, it's spent. Too bad. The uh, include um, everyday things. So that they really have to make choices, and uh, so, for example, when when children start going to school, you can um, sit with them, and um, if the uh, the school has published like um, uh, a list of things to to buy, first thing, um, try to together budget that, evaluate how much is going to cost all together, and. Um, I, be critical once again, uh, and that's where you you can use exa exactly the, the spending decisions, the quality. I mean, between a, a nice um, uh, a, a book note with um, a Disney character, which is going to be more expensive as a brand, and versus like the um, uh, no brand um, book note, um, there's a price difference. What do you think uh, uh, we should buy? And when you look at the the total cost, what does fit? I mean, this kind of discussion, you, you can have it. And I think that the school budget is, um, uh, although the going back to school budget is, uh, is a very good example. And also because it's really concerns them. So, uh, and uh, and then you give them, so you assess together how much it is, and then you give them the money, the total amount. And they have the money, the shopping list, and um, you let them buy the thing. So if... Even though they had uh, um, noted down on a one one notebook, uh, not branded, it's, it's cheaper. And in the end, they they buy the uh, kind of fancy one. And the uh, uh, if they don't have enough for the pens, well, it's too bad. But um, make them feel it. I mean, if. If you say, okay, oh, no, no, too bad, I, I'm just giving you money so that you can buy these pens. No, just don't do that. They, they won't learn anything. They just um, um, have them feel their um, uh, their bad choice. And as they grow, they go older. Um, if uh, in your budget you have, for example, uh, a budget for clothes, especially I'm thinking about yeah, uh, teenagers or a budget for mobile phone. 
you just um, give that to them. So, okay, that's that's your responsibility. You manage it. Don't forget that if you um, if you haven't given real budgets, real money, not just pocket money to buy more things, but real um, from your own expenses uh, to them. If you if you haven't given that experience, uh, it's a bit like if you ask your your child who's never ridden a, a um, rode a, a bike to do once they leave home to do um, uh, give them a bike and you say okay just do 100 kilometers with your bike it's the same thing if when they go uh, uh, go from your home and they they start being independent uh, they've been never trained with real money and uh, I mean real expenses not just a nice little um, pocket money that they absolutely need to uh, they, they need to spend uh, for their food they need to learn how to deal with their um, their rent and so on they, obviously it's going to be very very difficult and very scary so but if when they start being uh, I don't know, 10 years old 11 years old when they and gradually you you give bigger amounts um, if they learn how to manage these real expenses from from your own budget, it's going to be much easier and less scary for for them. Same thing you can do, for example, once a week. Your child uh, or your children collectively, just yeah, it depends. So one child in a row in a in a time, uh, they're responsible for one meal. So you make them assess. Okay, so you you have that amount for for the meal, and. Uh, Take the habit. Look at the, in the cupboard what's left. Look in the fridge. Uh, or write a shopping list. What you need to uh, uh, to buy, and does it fit in the amount I I, uh, um, I I gave you? I mean that kind of decisions. If they do that every week for 10, 15 years, I mean that would be the the best of the of the lessons versus any kind of formal teaching they uh, uh, they could get, and uh, and. And that's where you can yeah, talk about your yeah, quality and uh, and so on. Family projects are great uh, for for that. If you have um, a celebration or a, a holiday, uh, same thing with birthday parties. Be careful with birthday parties. Um, I mean, big birthday parties are. Um, are just teaching lots of um, lots of bad things. I think for me, they just yeah, uh, it's um, big encouragement to. Um, material things and uh, it's big pressure for other kids uh, uh, to buy presents so um, you can have a yeah, simple celebration when you have quality time and uh, and, and support games that's um uh, I think that teaches a, a lot more on um, uh, about um, money but any celebration any uh, uh, going on a, on a holiday and so on can be uh, discussed together and you assess and you looked online on the different uh, costs so you go shopping and uh, and you see the different prices before buying things all this can be yeah uh, very good examples of uh, um, what, where your child can learn about um, uh, financial decisions and uh, be careful with uh, very small children uh, don't don't try to involve them in in money too uh, uh, too soon really and uh, the and as i told you with the examples of uh, of school uh, uh going to school uh budget let them do mistakes if you tell them what well, you've got yeah 20 dollars for the for the meal and uh they bought i don't know a lot of rice and they they didn't have afford the uh the meat so i had to buy we're going to have to have rice tonight and, and no meat but i'm i'm sure you remember mistakes you made and you remember more the mistakes than the things you did well so that's how they learn we learn by mistakes so but learning by mistakes while the child is still in your home with a smaller amount of money. I mean, it's it's safer than making a big mistakes uh, when they're on their own and they they don't know how to um uh, to uh, to deal with it and they might end up with debts and and problems with other people. So to summarize, uh, I think the the main thing is you as parents, you're role models. So and the, your children is going to observe you all the time. So just observe yourself so that you kind of guess what your child is going to uh, uh, to observe. So um, and really, ethics 
and critical thinking is, is very, very important. So through all daily life uh, uh, examples, you can gradually build this behavior and this critical thinking. And as I've just told you, just give part of your family money um, to, uh, for your kids to, uh, uh, to manage. That's how they are. They're going to uh, uh, to learn uh, budgeting, making decisions, saving for later, and, uh, and so on. So that's uh, that's more or less what I I wanted to uh, to tell you about um, financial education and uh, and children. And be before I take your your questions, I I just wanted to go uh, quickly through the um the announcement I uh, I told you about. Um, we are launching a, a network of um ed- organizations who are involved more or less in um, in financial education. It's not just organizations who might be just about financial educations, but um, it's open to all other organizations who um, uh, who have some programs, even even if it's not their main programs. And this network will give access to um, uh, our training materials and, and guides. And uh, also we have regular uh, uh, Zoom training and uh, mostly training of trainers, uh, but also on capacity building. So the first training, we, which would start in uh, uh, February or March, uh, is about what is financial education and we'll have regular exchanges on on best practices so that's um uh, that's our big project for the uh, uh for the coming month is this um uh, this new network and uh, we'll also um starting uh, uh in february normally we'll have uh, our key training so it's this purchase ga- this budget game and the the business game that we that we have and, and some of uh, of you may know it uh we'll run it and it's open to all organizations uh three times so even not part of the network um three times a year we'll we'll do that um online we'll uh, uh and we'll give you the the material and 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 the guide to uh to run them that's the two announcements i uh, i wanted to make before we uh, uh we take questions mm-hmm. so i'm sure you have uh questions you can either be uh, uh uh, have your uh, your mic uh, unmute or uh, uh, type them in the um, in the chat. That's okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I I have no question about the training. It was very clear um, and interesting about the network. Um, the how, how you how, what what would be the format? So it's it's gonna be online. Um, it's yeah. okay. It's um it's going to be uh online, and we'll try to organize face to face uh training also. Mm-hmm. And uh, the uh, there'll be a, an online platform with all the the training materials and and, and guides. Uh, we'll we'll ask for um, a fee, um, probably two hundred uh, euros for um, uh, one organization. So even if you're five or six uh, participants in that organization, it's one fee per organization. And uh, there will be the the training the the training of trainers and the the capacity building uh, training will be. Uh, mostly online we'll try and i know i've got some demand from uh, west africa to do um, a training probably in uh, ivory coast in uh, in august uh, and that will be face to face uh for cambodia i sent them uh kind of an email to see if yeah there was some some interest in um in december i think and i i got very very low response so for now i i can't promise i i come over to uh to cambodia mm-hmm. But if there's yeah, if there's demand, I'm I'm always ready. And and I think for, for me, what I really want to to encourage, and that's why we we call it a, a network, is uh, for organizations to exchange best practices. So we we organize mm-hmm. uh, probably Zoom because it's it's easier uh, and and cheaper than uh, than renting a, a place for that. But uh, organize um, uh, meetings and and sharings of. Uh, uh, if you have best practices, what what have you done? What works? I mean, one topic would be, for example, uh, parents' uh, um, education about uh, uh, finance. So, um, 
Yeah, if you're in interested, I can send you more more information. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Gopal. Thank you very much. Do, do you have? Uh, I know that we uh, we run a bit of um of time, and um, uh, but if you if you have more questions, I'm um, I'm happy. And if not, we uh we can wrap up. Okay. Thank you, Supon. Okay, good, good. I hope that um, this uh, you've learned a few things, and uh, uh, the uh, I'll send you the the recording. And if um, uh, if you have uh, if you want to to get the uh, the PowerPoint as a as a way, so I can yeah, uh, I'm happy to uh, to share it um, uh, with you. And uh, if you're interested to in um, how you can instill that to parents uh, on um, uh, on a training. I'm I'm working on on that also, so uh, uh, we can have a kind of a, a training of trainers on the, on that uh, one day. All right. Well, thank you very much, everyone. Have a nice, uh, I guess, evening for you. I guess yeah, more or less everyone is um, uh, is based in uh, in Asia, and um, and talk to you soon for um. So you, I, I let you choose the uh, the next webinar's topic. Thank you, Sophia. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Mm -hmm.